some exciting progress in the goat barn to show off. It's been quite a while, I think, since I've actually done any work in here. Um, got distracted with other things, as you know, but check it out. We have built, finally, some pens. We decided to go with um, just two. We originally talked about doing three birthing stalls in here, but we just thought trying to cram three in here would have been just that. They would have been crammed. Um, so we went with two. Uh, we're quite happy that we did. Um, I'll introduce you to our baby boy bucks here in just a minute. They've been living in here for about the past two weeks off and on because we pretty much got them and then they got sick right, right away. So we've been fostering them, trying to get them healthy back up. But anyway, I just want to show you the stalls and then the loft that I started on today. That was kind of an afterthought. So the stalls, real basic. We just went, um, I think, 42 inches high to the top. So it's still a good height that we can walk in here and lean over. Uh, but we also went with um, full wide open gates. We talked about building our own wooden gates and we just decided that, you know, these are these are relatively cheap. Um, I think they're like 80 bucks a piece, but relatively cheap. Uh, we could have built our own for less, I'm sure, but then they would have just been big, heavy, awkward, solid wood gates, and it wouldn't have got as much ventilation. So we're actually really happy with these to have a good ventilation, plus you can hang feeders on them. Um, and we've managed to you know, pretty, get a pretty good system for hanging those little gate latches. So they can swing in uh, or be out swing, which most likely we'll do an out swing when we're coming in here to work on the goats, just so you know we don't cram the gate into the pen and mess them all up. So yeah, that one's, dirty because the boys have been living in there this one my wife just swept out just trying to keep it kind of clean and tidy in here um we haven't decided yet we might actually have to put one of the bread doughs in here just to kind of isolate her and help her put on some weight because she acts like she's losing weight which is kind of weird uh for the loft that was actually like i said kind of an afterthought it's gonna be tight but i think it's gonna just work so we've decided to close in the ceiling up here i'm gonna run 12 foot just free span two by fours from the back all the way to the front I might sister them up or something but uh, I think they'll be okay you know they're not really load bearing they're just gonna carry the ceiling so I think it'll be okay on that long span um, and with that this bale it looks like the bale is gonna be too tall but if you can get up on top which you guys can't quite I think there's gonna be just enough room that we'll have to kind of squeeze the bales up there but we originally said well we weren't gonna we didn't think we were gonna put a loft in here uh because we didn't want to have you know real low kind of crowded ceiling and we thought well you know not really gonna be able to store anything else up there anyway but i got to measure and i realized i can just fit one bale you know that's the plan or just just one bale high so the it's not too much to be a loft for you know all winter storage but it's just a loft for um you know some some on-site storage basically uh, I'd released the video where we went and stocked up on bales and we stored all those over at the in-laws place because we don't have anywhere really else to put them here. If we had an open stall, I guess we could throw a pallet down and stack them up on a pallet in a stall and maybe store, you know, 15 or 20 maybe. But we really don't want to occupy our stalls with some other, you know, something else and then not be able to use them. So the plan is, it looks like we'll probably be able to fit about, I don't know, six, maybe seven if we really squeeze them up there my goal was to get five um so that's gonna be okay yes dear yes you can wash it and eat it my daughter's picking radishes out of the garden that's perfect um i'm still not quite done with the loft i'm gonna put half inch flooring in it just so it's solid or at least do like you know space them every other or something just so the bale because i just balanced that bale up there just on the two by four it's just for demonstration so, like I said, I gotta close the ceiling in. Um, I'm gonna try to at least get the two by fours cut. I gotta see if I've got a 12 foot log around here to cut the two by fours out of. I think I do. Uh, I got some 16 footers, but those are kind of spoken for. See what I can dig up. But I wanna get the, the uh, joists done. Um, that's kind of the next thing that's just kind of weighing on my mind is bothering me I, I really don't want to do it but wife asked me to do it so i'm going to close it in um yeah and then once i get that done that'll be the i think that's pretty much the best of or the rest of big framing and then it'll just be more of like i said the half inch decking boards for the loft floor 
and then we'll do those same sort of decking boards for the ceiling. Uh, so it'd be kind of tongue and groove like the wall. I think I'll just overlap them. Um, might even do something kind of like a board and batten. But anyway, still not totally decided there. But probably just overlap them just again so if they shrink a little bit, they still don't gap. I did get the rest of this wall closed up. I just did that today and I ran out. I needed one more board. <laughs> one more board and I ran out. But that's cool to have that closed up and have this mostly closed up. So as far as walking in here and working, the barn is, you know, done. There's no big holes in the wall. It's very functional. Let me take you outside, introduce you to the new little boys. Um, I wish I could tell you more about them. My wife is the goat expert, not me. I'm just her helper. But we do have three little boys. We finally bought our own breeding stock. Well, this one we're not keeping. This one is a foster child. This is Carpe Diem, and this is Jack, and this is Mr. Prince. He's named Prince because his dad is Kingsbeer. Um, I'm not an expert on the goats, like I said, but just from what my wife has told me, what I understand of their um, conformation and just their body shape, I am super happy with these little guys, and they are very friendly. I know someday they're going to get to be big, stinky bucks, so I'm trying to just appreciate them as little boys right now. So. Prince and Jack are who we're keeping. Like I said, Jack is Carpe, uh, Carpe, Diem's, Carpe Diem is Jack's brother, and we're actually just fostering him because the lady we got him from is, she's out of space. She didn't have anywhere to put him. So we figure what the heck, might as well take him. I'm trying to get them to show you their back end, but they're following me around. Oh, yeah, look at those. <laughs> got some boy goats. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to try to have my wife do a video for you guys if I can ever get her on camera, to talk about, no, back up, back up, back up. Now you're stuck, Jack. Prince, Prince, now you're really truly stuck, buddy. Back up, back up. Um, they're wanting to follow me out because they want to come stay in their barn. But it's nice weather. They need to stay outside where they belong in their little hut over there. We do have them on some blue water here. I don't know what's in it. My wife told me but it's electrolyte um, something because they were sick but they're acting pretty healthy right now they're certainly energetic bouncing around a lot anyway the plan is that now now we finally have our own breeder bucks because all this time we just had females and we've been taking them to a breeder and we haven't had very good luck with it uh i don't know how much luck you're supposed to have but the problem is you haul them all over there you you know pay to have them bred and then you wait and you see what happens and you know it's if nothing else it's better just to be able to have them here you don't have to haul them all around and you know we can just put the dough in with the buck and you know leave her in there for more than just the three week kind of minimum period because that's the deal right now you take her over there they hold your dough until they observe that she's been bred um, but you know if it's a false heat or something like that you don't really know so in theory we have three right now that have been bred only one of them um, is really putting on weight and kind of puffing out and looks like she's pregnant. The other two almost seem like they're losing weight. They almost seem very not pregnant. Um, which is going to suck if that's the case because this will be round two for one of them. If she doesn't take, it'll be the second time that we've had her over there to the breeder and she hasn't been bred. So anyway, we finally invested in our own bucks. They're super high quality bucks. Uh, very, very good trophy bloodlines. Um, we actually got a really good deal on them. And no sooner than we bought them, uh, Jack and Carpet's mom, Carpet, we call him Carpet, Carpe Diem, Jack and Carpe's mom went to another show and set a whole bunch of new records and won a bunch of trophies. So basically Carpe and Jack's value went way up, but we had already contracted Jack and we don't plan to keep Carpe. We have no reason to. There's no reason to have brothers uh, from a genetic standpoint. So they need a couple more months under their belt just to mature a little bit and then they will be our breeder bucks for the junior does there when we get to do um, when we finally get around to breeding the juniors um, they'll be the first go around which those the juniors are all old enough now um, that they could be bred but we're not ready to yet we don't want to breed them just yet and the boys are still a little young so we'll get let the boys get a couple of months on them get a little bit more mature and um give the juniors a little bit more time too until we're ready so yeah that's it mostly just wanted to uh get caught up on changes and what all is going on um 
yeah, I don't have nothing else to say. I'm probably boring you guys, but I'll get the uh, rafters put in here and probably tack that on the end of this video. Okay, well, just give you a little bit of a start here. You can see this is how I was trying to say I was going to do the ceiling. I don't know if I mentioned in the in the last little bit. I had thought maybe I would come up about two feet and then flatten off and come across with another set of joists. Um, but then looking at it again this morning, I thought, well, that's not necessary. Um, it's just a whole bunch of extra lumber I'm gonna have to go cut and install. So instead I went ahead and just studded out the gables. Um, so these little studs are notched to fit around the rafter behind them. And then I installed the two new rafters there and there and these two new rafters there, which really more than anything are just um, a place to fix the end of the ceiling to. They're nailer, nailer boards. Um, I've already closed up this gable, as you can see, it just took two more courses. This one I started closing up the end of it enough that I could put the boards up. Haven't done the rest of it, but I will shortly. Um, for right now, I'm out of, um, out of half inch, so I gotta go back to the sauna. But doing it just like, um, just like how you do kind of tongue and groove flooring, staggering as needed. You know, a lot of these walls and stuff I did full, there's no joints because I had the longer boards, but I don't have any 12 foot logs out there right now. So I'm having to saw out nine footers, which yeah, means I got to stagger them, but that's okay because everything's going to shrink a little bit and move around. And then here in the loft, I just put down the first board just because it's the last one that I had. I'm going to go saw out more half inch. I'm going to get this loft deck, this part of the loft deck done, at least this end of it. Um, and then be back over there and keep close up that gable and keep working my way up. So don't know if I'll give you an update or not, but I'll definitely show you how it looks when it's done. Now, look at that. Oh, it's really starting to come together. Basically it just looks like a tongue and groove ceiling. That's my only big screw up right there I'm not happy with. I was working actually at the other end of the board, trying to line it up and I, I felt it pull loose, but I didn't realize that it gapped like it did. But everything else is actually going up surprisingly well. Um, I got kind of stupid with it this morning because I put up the first few rows down here at the end all the way to the wall and then decided to close the wall up so it looks really stupid. You can see the gap right there. Um, but it'll be hidden behind hay bales most of the time so hopefully it won't be a big deal. But you see it looks a lot better over there. That's just a, uh, a scab board I put up there just to hold the ends while I'm working on the other end. But Got my gables closed in here, which always sucks, but got it done. That one's done. And I was really just scampering today just to get that much of the loft done. Oh, I guess I got the whole loft floor, almost the whole loft floor. Almost the whole loft floor. I left some gaps in it, um, just so it was an easy four boards. The bottom side, my wife said she wants sealed up so wasps and stuff aren't flying up in there making nests, which I guess is a fair enough thing. So the bottom side, I'll have to do four boards and then cut a a final board to fill the gap or whatever which actually with it being seven inch boards overlapped six inch reveal and it's 30 inches it'll be it, it'll actually will look out i think it'll work out pretty good anyway i've been using the little scraps there just to fill up uh anytime i have a little 16 inch scrap to fill out the decking because i can't use the 16 inch scraps uh on the ceiling they just don't work very well trying to span the joists so i always try to have at least a 32 inch span so yeah, coming along well. See what else I can't get done today. I've been sawing out one log at a time, hauling over here, putting it up, and going back and doing another one. Kind of keeps the day interesting. All right, well there's the grand finale. The roof is all done. <laughs> That's a lot, of, a lot of wood lap all over the place. I got one more board left to put up on the wall here. And I've got it laying out there on the ground. I gotta cut it to the length, but I've got it off the sawmill. I also had to stitch in this little bit of conduit and wire here because of course my original plan was not to close this roof in, so I was just gonna run the electrical, you know, some other time. And then I realized today if I close the roof in, I can't fish my wire. So I just took a three-quarter elbow that I found and uh, clamped it up there in the ceiling, ran the wires through it. So the wires, of course, go up in there and they come back down in the conduit. And then the conduit runs down through the floor and comes out underneath that board there on the ground. Anyway, so I did have to do that little bit. But I think my finest work here is on this center kind of ridge cap that ties it all together. Maybe not my finest work, but it's, you know, seamless. 
it, it all worked out perfectly on the spacing that just one board um, closed them both together. So there's one long board up to the edge of the pole, then I made this little short one to go around the pole, and then actually just used up a couple more short ones and scraps. Of course, last nail that I fire cracks the board. I just can't leave well enough alone. But anyway, it's all closed in. The roof's closed in. It looks very pretty. The loft is done. We're not going to close in the bottom after all. Wife said she was fine leaving it wide open. She just didn't want it like open but with cracks to where wasps and stuff would crawl in. So wide open's okay because then we can just, you know, we can see it if they start building a nest. Yeah, happy with it. Just got one more piece of the wallboard slap up there and then a couple of pieces of trim on the stalls, but I'm not going to worry about that. We'll call this a wrap on the video. Pretty, pretty wood lap everywhere.